we had to do it. We had to compare these popular overdrive pedals. Sure, we're missing out some of them, like the MXR or the Ampex Scrambler, but hey, this is what we have. And they cost me less than 90 euros a piece, secondhand, except for this one, 24 euros new. Welcome back to the Weatherbase. Please feel free to subscribe and remember to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. About the loops, I recorded the bass lines through the Lightstone Tube 2 uh, preamp uh, through the DI out without the EQ. Then I used the Palmer Da Capo reamplification box to send from the audio interface the recorded loops to the pedals. So the signal from the pedals goes through this compressor, which is the Becos Compic Twain, and the Lightstone again with no EQ. Okay, so let's continue. We'll set the pedals for a warm sound at a low gain and just take it easy. Now we'll crank up the gain and see how they behave. Let's take it a step back and get a bit more experimental. Now for something completely different. The tone and the volume knobs of the bass guitar have been lowered.
Think of the Nobles as a thick preamp overdrive. I like the constancy of the saturation and the little noise coming out of it. It's great as a standalone preamp and it's perfect for a vintage type of drive that can venture into a more modern territory. The Ibanez is a tube screamer, no doubt about it. We are talking about mid-presence and in this case a low-gain drive effect. The distortion crackles and it's not as creamy as the Nobles. So consider this pedal as a boost drive for your warm sounding rig that lets you cut through the mix rather than have its own overdrive character. It's almost impossible to talk about the Behringer without mentioning the Boss bass overdrive. To my ears, the Behringer has a more relaxed and less compressed signal, but the sound signatures are quite similar. Scooped mids and fizzy mid to high gain distortion. The most versatile preamp overdrive by far in this comparison is the Battalion. This does it all, and it even has a balanced output for plugging directly into a console. To me, it sounds more like a distortion effect, but can perfectly do low gain drive. This is the pedal I would recommend to anyone who wants to start using an overdrive preamp pedal for bass and has little to no experience. Also quite versatile is the bass driver by Digitech. At lower gain, it rivals the mids of the bass tube screamer, and it goes up with ease into a scooped and compressed high gain territory. We only use the mixer output for this video. The multi-drive in both the standard and tube settings lets a lot of low end through, and the saturation is always pleasant. If it wasn't for the Ananas Head bass drive that we will review sooner than you think, I would definitely recommend the EBS for anyone looking for a simple to use yet great sounding drive. And now for the last one. I keep on describing this pedal as similar sounding to a clear and warm analog mixing console, because I do not find another way to do so. It's got a special delicate flavor that makes it unique compared to the others. And forget about the fizzy distortion that you hear, it's by no means comparable to the boss and it completely disappears in a band mix. So, which ones do I like? The first and the last one. Hope you enjoyed this overdrive comparison video. Thanks so much for watching. Please check my Instagram for what's coming up and I will see you soon. Bye bye.